What's up, everybody? Dell up here, right here. I'm back to making some more. Ah, uh, almost the last play. Back to making some more Visual Basic 2010 tutorials. And in the last uh, tutorial, we got a basic if then else command working. And in this tutorial, I'm actually going to show you how to. Well, not really show you how to, or basically explain and show you how to use timers because when it comes to timers, they're one of my favorite. Uh, one of my favorite. Uh, tools to use inside of Visual Basic because it's basically endless what you can do with them uh, for creating different stuff to however much you want it. So the first thing that you need to do with timers is of course you need to drag it down onto your onto your form and then it should go down here uh, create a timer 1, timer 2, etc. And the default name is going to be of course timer 1 and then increase to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 etc. So one of the main properties that you're going to want to always set is the interval. Now please remember that intervals can be changed um, as an example you can change an interval to whatever you want it to. Um, when you click a button again if you go inside of the button that click you can change it to timer1.interval actually I'll show you how that, that command works timer1.interval then you put an equal sign to represent that you want the interval to equal whatever and you can type in whatever you want there and again that will change the timer one's interval to what to whenever you to whatever you choose whenever you click that button but we're just gonna not worry about that right now and we're gonna worry about actually setting the interval interval is the number of it's the time it actually takes for the timer to click or tick as it's called in this in visual basic and it's represented in milliseconds so, if you want it to be uh, one second, you would have to type in 1,000 milliseconds, or a minute would be 60,000 milliseconds, I believe, and then just keep going up. So, what we're going to do is we're actually going to set it to five seconds, which is going to be 5,000 milliseconds, and we're going to put enabled equal false, meaning as soon as um, you stop the application, the timer is not going to start actual the actual five second countdown as I should say as soon as you launch it so in order to enable the timer to actually start counting what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need it to be enabled by another uh, manual enabler which is again you can use anything as far as um, a button to I'm trying to think what you would use onto when the form loads which we really won't want to do that but you try you, you sort of get what I'm trying to say so if you go in and go inside the button, we can actually, if you want to leave all this, um, you can. But what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to even make this more complicated. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, if the password in text box 1 says start, then a message box is going to come up and say, and say timer 1 started. So we're basically just going to change the text and the password. So I'll just go over this again. If the text in text box 1 is start, then it's going to message box is going to come, come up saying timer 1 started. And then if it's not, we're using the else command. So if not, then it's going to say timer 1 not started. So what we're we're going to actually keep adding to the command up on the top that says if it equals start it's going to show a message message box and then if we type enter if we hit enter it will open up a new line and this is going to be basically saying also so you don't have to type also but a new line will represent a new line of code that is going to execute if it equals start and we're going to put timer one dot enabled equal true which means um, again in the properties of the timer we had set to to be not enabled which would be equal to false and then once we type in start and hit the button if it equals start it's gonna the timer one is gonna be enabled or it's gonna be equal to true so now we actually have it so that when we hit the button the timer is gonna start so how do we configure the t actual timer to do s to execute commands on Q um, again it's very much like the the button how it works when you click that but if you go ahead and change the timer, double click it, so every time it ticks, which is going to be again 5 seconds, um, you're going to want it to do execute the commands, and I'm just going to put message box, timer 1 works. 
So if we go in and run this, and we type in start, hey, hello world, timer one started, and then five seconds later, go to the timer, it should say that it works. Okay, so that's how you use a timer, the basics of timers, and please remember to comment and subscribe.